And with us here is Ben Elton. Hello, sir. Oh, lovely to see you, Ken. We've spoken many times in the past and a great pleasure to be uh, here at uh, GHR with you. Yeah, it's, it's new surroundings for us, Indeed, but it's lovely. But you, are, you are the warm bath we all slip into, <laughs> Ken, so I'm happy to follow you anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm cooling off quickly. <laughs> but lovely to see you, Ben, because it's a very, very busy time for you. As mm. uh, we were hearing, you're about to star as an actor in your own show. Yes, it's a big uh, and exciting departure. I, I I, uh, I I hope it's the right one. Brian, Brian May and Roger Taylor have been very supportive. We we bring we will rock you back to uh, the to London to London's West End, indeed to the Coliseum for a massive three month season at one of London's most prestigious and biggest venues. It's a big new production, and I'm directing it as I always direct. We will rock you, but the one of the big changes is that I'm going to be playing Pop, the rebel leader, who's the kind of wise old guru, who's the kind of comic spine of the piece. Um, and I don't know, it just seemed the time was right. We were talking about whether, who we should, you know, should we, I don't know, should we ask David Essex or whatever? You know, because it's such a big new production and it'd be fun to have some, you know, we've got Brenda Edwards yeah. playing the Killer Queen as she did at the Dominion Theatre in the old old days and Lee Mead. And, we, you know, I think, should we spice up Pop a bit? And I said, well, you need a real comic because it's a comic role and normally I seek out comic actors and sort of the words came by Brian and Roger we were in a room together and then well and suddenly why don't I do it and yes and I'm very excited and I will be singing Days of Our Lives the sublime Roger Taylor song and uh, I've been working a little bit on with it my wife who's a bass player and a very talented musician and she says I can certainly hold the tune so I'm I'm hoping it'll be okay. I think it probably will. <laughs> well, I mean, you're a, an experienced performer. That's uh, three quarters of the battle. The fact yes. That you... the, the comedy is, is, I'm really, you know, I don't want to sound complacent, but I think I can nail that. I've rehearsed this show many times with various pops, and I always tell them where the laughs are, and I know where the laughs are because I wrote them. Um, and I do a lot of comedy work, as you know. But the truth of the matter is, I haven't done any acting since I was a student, and I haven't been in a musical since I, I played the Artful Dodger in an amateur production of We Will Rock You in 1973 with the Godalming Theatre Group at Godalming Borough Hall. So it's 50 years between drinks, Ken. So <laughs> me singing a song on stage is, is a long time gestating. So I, I'm not going to pretend I'm not nervous. I don't normally get nervous going on stage, but I will be very nervous singing a Queen song in a smash it Queen musical in front of Queen, because they'll be there the first night. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get away with it. Don't yeah. you worry about a thing. Now, we're going to ask you to choose uh, some songs from a particular year, your golden year. You've gone for 1987. Yes. Why that year? Well, I mean, firstly, you know, rock and pop, I'm a massive rock and pop fan. It's part of my life. I'm fortunate enough to work in it, as we, we will rock you. And, and it means everything to me. And I couldn't believe I wasn't offered the 60s, because, you know, most of my significant rock years, even though I was scarcely, you know, I was very young... So there's so such a broad canvas. So instead of trying to choose like my favourite song or my favourite band, I chose a year of emotional significance because we all know that rock and pop, as, as, as Noel Coward said, strange how potent cheap music is, i.e. it's the pop songs that really break our hearts and the ones that we remember from times we were in love or times we were, you know, sad or happy or whatever. So I'm choosing 1987 because it was the year... I began courting my now wife. I met her in 1986 when Rick Mail and I toured Australia and uh, she was part of uh, our support act, her, an all-girl rock band, and, uh, and I ended up marrying a bass player. And in 1987, we began our, our, our romance. Uh, and so I'm choosing uh, songs from that year. And in fact, uh, do you want me to start on a song? Shall I well, move? Go on, yes, please. Well, the first, the first song I'm choosing, I mean... As I say, I have a, a million favourite songs, pop songs and rock songs from, from Elvis onwards. Uh, but this is a wonderful song. George Michael's Faith, an extraordinary moment in pop history because having had what he did with Wham, I mean, in terms of reinventing, you know, teeny bop pop as, as high quality, I mean, it was almost back to the Motown years in terms of just how good pop music could be, what George Michael had done with Wham. And then suddenly this new mature George appeared and uh, with the whole album Faith, and I was just kind of longing to see this this beautiful girl in Australia, and and I was listening to to Faith, and you you know when you're in love you got to have faith. I sang it. It was uh, Sophie's fiftieth uh, uh, birthday, uh, and as I say, she's a musician. Many of our friends are musicians, so of course we had a band at the party as we always do, live bands. And uh, I sang Faith. Oh. I sang Faith, not as well as George Michael does. But I had a great guitarist who did that down to down to down that 50s, brilliant 50s rock and roll guitar. 
So it was a lovely, it was a lovely thing to do, and and uh, I think Sophie appreciated it. Although she prefers George's version. Oh, okay. You well, know, he sent flowers. We didn't. I didn't know him well, but he was such a kind and beautiful man. And we had a terrible, we had a difficult journey to have our children. I mean, it's documented in much yeah. of my work. But uh, our, our twins were IVF, and out of the blue, totally unexpectedly, this incredible bouquet arrived from George Michael yeah. to Sophie, and and she'd never met him. I knew him slightly. I tell you what, the nurses, the wonderful NHS nurses who helped us through that difficult time, they could not believe it. George Michael sent us flowers. But kindness is what you hear after all these years about what George has done for lots of people mm. over the years. Absolutely. Well, there's a private personal story. He, I mean, I, I still can't quite believe it because I say we, we weren't friends. We'd met a few times and were friendly. I came through in the 80s just as he did and so we were contemporary in our you know, celebrity, although his was rather more global than mine. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's true and lovely, and it's a lovely song. It is absolutely beautiful. So, next one is going to be Letter from America by the Proclaimers. Yes, I love the Proclaimers. They broke through in 1987. Um, I mean, they're raw. They were kind of folk punk. They are as genuine and as authentic today as they have ever been. They're one of my favourite bands, the two, the Reed Boys, uh, and, of course, Letter from America, it's packed with fabulous songs. I wanted to choose a song called Throw the R Away because it's got one of the best opening lines of any song, which is, uh, this is the story of our first teacher, Shetland made her jumpers and the devil made her features, which is <laughs> uh, such an incredible... I mean, of course, uh, a Proclaimer's lyrics are as good as their tunes, which means they're damn good. And uh, I've, I've had the chance to get to know the boys. In fact, they also um, uh, did something romantic for us because... Uh, when Emma Freud was interviewing them the year I was getting married, 1994, and she said, oh, I'm going to Ben's wedding, and uh, would you?" And they recorded a little message uh, for, for me and Sophie. That was lovely. I, I know them slightly. So, Absolutely. oh, my goodness, their harmonies. And, you know, there's a funny thing about a uh, letter from America. There's a lot of snobbery around it because, of course, the, the proclaimers were famously acoustic. I saw them live in a very small gig in 87. And, you know, they did it all with, like, one guitar and slapping and banging a few rhythm instruments and the, their incredible voices. But, of course, Letter from America got produced. It became a pop song, a proper pop a rock song. And a lot of people said, oh, it's not the original. But it, it, was, the, it was the single. Let, let them rock. It's like, you know, Dylan went electric. You know, you can be more than one thing. But the Proclaimers had that, that brief Dylan moment where people were saying, they've already sold out. They've had a hit <laughs> single. It's just ridiculous. I, I mean, success, there's nothing wrong with success. Success, as long as it doesn't ruin your quality. Look at George Michael. <laughs> exactly. I, and, of course, in your own case, you can be more than one thing. You've done so many different things, which mm. is people find a bit suspicious in this country sometimes. Yeah, I it? get in it. So you've churned out another novel, have you? you go, well, no, I've written one, and I put my heart and soul into it. But there's so many of them. Well, I work fast. Uh, look, my third uh, record is not a sort of moment of romance. By the way, the, the, the claimers were also something Sophie and I listened to. I introduced her to them. So that's also kind of a bit of a, one of our bands, you know, as 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 a couple, um, and one band that we share as a couple is a besotted um, devotion, love like the rest of the planet to the Beatles. I could have chosen two of Britain's greatest bands, Queen, but they didn't even have a hit in 1987, a rare year they didn't have a hit, and nor did the Beatles, obviously, because they'd split up many years before. Um, they are the DNA of Britain. Uh, uh, I think that the Beatles are, are not just the greatest band of the 20th century, but the greatest cultural institution, a, a second to Charlie Chaplin in terms of their global outreach and the fact that they actually changed society. I mean, you could argue, you know, our, our Queen is great. Uh, uh, they're probably equal artistically, but the Beatles' impact was was across society in every terms, and I, I, I love them so much. They didn't have a... Uh, they were long gone by 1987, but one of the Beatles had a fantastic hit. I was fortunate enough to be friends with George Harrison, one of the great privileges of my life, uh, I went and saw him play with Carl Perkins at uh, uh, one time, and he sought me out afterwards. The first words George Harrison said to me were, thanks for keeping us amused during the 80s. <laughs> Those were literally the first words. He didn't say hello. Those were the words. Anyway, I, we, we became friends. What a privilege. What a great artist, a member of the, the greatest of all uh, rock collectives, the Beatles. And this is a solo hit, 
George Harrison got my mind set on you. Ben Elton's Choices from 1987. Mm. A good year for you, but this is shaping up to be a pretty good year too, Ben. Yes, very special. This new season at the Coliseum, a new production of We Will Rock You. Of course, uh, it's still a dream come true for me. I still pinch myself that I'm working with Queen. You know, we're talking about the Beatles. You could, same breath, we're talking about Queen, a, a global British institution whose contribution to the sum of human happiness is incalculable. And I've known them all my life. I was I left home when I was 16. The, the Queen were at number one with Bohemian Rhapsody. And, and it, it helped me through some very lonely early weeks as a, as a lonely teenager living in a bed sit, studying away from home. Uh, and the idea that I would not only end up collaborating with them, directing their musical, but actually appearing in it and singing a Queen song, which I'll be doing right through the summer at London's Coliseum with We Will Rock You. 2nd of June is the opening night, I believe. Ah, that's the first preview, press first night preview. on the 7th. Right. And I'll be there for three months, and if you would like to see it, I think you'll need to get in booking quick at, uh, I think it's uh, wewillrockyoulondon.com. Yeah. Well, it's always it's always sold out every time it's been on. Well, stage, it isn't yet, it? but it will be. <laughs> so if you'd like to see, uh, I think, the greatest of all rock musicals, we will rock you, but I would say that. But then it's uh, Queen, yes, so yeah. it is. It is, really. Uh, yeah. then, then come along to the Coliseum. Great stuff. Ben, can't wait to see you in that. Uh, one quick question, mm. which you don't need to answer if you don't want to. We've heard rumours about... Uh, uh, a reboot, an anniversary version of Blackadder, another of your babies. Is that coming? Do you know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I always know Tony's either written a book or doing a new show because there's a rumour of a Blackadder reunion. Uh, Tony, Tony Baldrick, <laughs> it always say, oh, Tony's out doing interviews again. <laughs> no, there is absolutely no uh, plan or indeed chance whatsoever of there being a new Blackadder series. None of us really wanted... We're all still good friends. I saw Tony this morning, actually, interestingly, and I'm... I'm I'm having I'm having supper with uh, Hugh on Sunday night. We're all friends. I love Ro. I love Stephen. Richard and I continue to always talk about. One day we'll write something together again, but it won't be the Blackadder because why would we? It, it it's held with too much affection. I don't want to spoil that, and I don't think there there certainly are no plans, and I'd be very surprised if there ever were any. Right, so that's clear enough. Mm. Great wisdom, though, <laughs> in, in that. Thank mm. you very much, Ben. Best of luck with We Will Rock You. Thank you, Ken. And th good luck with this wonderful new home you're at. The show is as good as ever, and I can't tell you how pleased I am to be one of the early guests. So kind. Thanks, Ben. Ken Bruce. Weekdays, 10 till 1. Great.